Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And from Hollywood, here comes the star-studded show train. Tonight, your railroads, through the Association of American Railroads, present the musical hit, Roberta. In our star-studded cast, you will hear the host of our series, Gordon McRae. Two famous guest stars, Eddie Bracken and Jan Clayton. Nana Bryant as Madame Roberta, Viola Vaughn as Schwarenka, and a cast of Hollywood featured players, including Sheila Stevens and Rye Billsbury. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the entire production is set to the music of Carmen Dragon's Orchestra, and brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and the things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Gordon McRae helping to bring you another in our series of musical successes. Tonight, the Railroad Hour presents the story of a French modiste, a musical show that ran for more than a year on Broadway, was a big hit on the screen, and has played season after season in theaters all over the country. It's Roberta, with book and lyrics by Otto Harbach and music by Jerome Kern. <laughs> Tonight I play the part of Johnny Kent, who falls out of love with one girl and into love with another. The one I want to marry at the final curtain is named Stephanie, assistant to Madame Roberta, the famous Parisian modiste. I met Stephanie when Madame Roberta, who was really my Aunt Minnie, cabled me to come to Paris at once. With such a charming star as Miss Jan Clayton playing the part of Stephanie this evening, I'm very glad I visited Madame Roberta, especially when I heard Stephanie sing... My friend Huckleberry Haynes, the famous band leader, went to France with me. When we got to Le Havre, Huck decided to rehearse his band in the dock. Well, I went to see about getting our stuff through customs. I'd introduce Huck to you if he and his band weren't getting ready to do a number, but I'm sure you know him well. Because Huckleberry Haynes is played by our other guest star this evening, the very popular young comedian, Mr. Eddie Bracken. Oh, so sings, heaven help you. Now that you got me going, what you gonna do? Is it up to me? Is it up to you? What kind of game is this you've begun? Was it done just for fun? I suspect you'll be wrecked when she answers you quite direct. Is this to be a case of falling glad you fell? Kiss and never tell, folly and farewell. What is it gonna be, lose or win? Cry a grin, let's begin. What you gonna do? Is it up to me? Is it up to you? What kind of game is this we've begun? Was it done just for fun? I suspect you'll be wrecked when she answers you quite direct. Is this to be a case of falling glad you fell? Kiss and never tell, folly and farewell. Which is it gonna be, lose or win? Try again. Let's begin. Huck was still rehearsing when I finally got through customs and hurried over to him calling, Okay, Huck, let's go. Hold it, hold it, fellas, hold it. Well, Johnny, how do you feel, boy? Oh, who cares? All I want to do is get to Paris, find out what Aunt Minnie wants with me, and then go home. What's eating you? Hey, don't tell me you're still fretting about that witch, Sophie. Oh, Sophie's got something, Huck. Yeah, and I'm allergic to it. 
Besides, she's too old for you, Johnny. She's 25 if she's a day. She's only 23. That's her IQ. Oh. <laughs> Watch out. Now, here comes Sophie. Well, for crying out loud, tell her to get lost. Tell her to turn blue. Tell her to go to... Hello, Sophie. <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Haynes. Would you mind stepping to one side? You're obstructing traffic. Oh, now, Sophie, just a minute. I've got to talk to you. Well, it won't do you any good, Johnny. Frankly, I'm interested in much bigger things. Swell. Maybe I can fix you up with an octopus. Very funny. (laughs) Very funny, Huck. Very funny indeed. You should stick to your music. Oh, good idea. Let's go, boys. Well, what are we supposed to do, dance? I just want another chance to square myself with you, Sophie. With words and music by Huck Haynes, I suppose. Well, go ahead and see if I can. You're devastating and so far above me To think of mating I never could dare You couldn't ever be lonely and love me You're much too clever how I care You were destined for You throne rooms You were fashioned for Princess to see Still I keep dreaming Of you in my own rooms And there you whisper And four purple hued throne rooms. You were fashioned for princess to see. Still, I keep dreaming of you in my own room. And there you whisper. poured my heart out in song and Sophie just walked away from me. But I forgot her on the train thinking about my Aunt Minnie and what a success she had been as Madame Roberta, the most famous modiste in all France. And when we got to Paris, I could hardly wait to get to her place and knock on the door. Johnny! Aunt Minnie! Oh, oh, Johnny, I'm so happy to see you. But your ship must have docked hours ago. Where have you been? (laughs) Learning about French customs. Already? Oh, Johnny, let me look at you. You're more handsome than ever. Ah, and you're more beautiful than ever, Aunt Minnie. Oh, this is Stephanie, Johnny. She's the real Madame Roberta now. How do you do? I'm pleased to meet you. Isn't she pretty? Oh, if you'll excuse me, I must get back to the fitting room and get that gown ready for Mademoiselle Schwerenko. Oh, she'll be screaming her head off. Good, we'll have it stuffed. How do you like Stephanie, John? Oh, very nice. Very nice indeed. I want you two to get along well together. It's so important for you to be happy. And you can be. If your tomorrows are as happy as your yesterdays. When you get to be my age, Johnny, you live in the past. Voices of old friends, old loves ring in your ears. Don't you remember what I told you when you were a little boy? Yes, Aunt Minnie. You told me that yesterdays gave one courage to face tomorrow. Why, I even remember the song you sang to me. Yesterdays, yesterdays, days I knew as happy, sweet, sequesterdays. i 
about romance and love. Then gay youth was mine. Truth was mine. Joyous, free, and flaming life for sooth was Johnny. Yes, Aunt Minnie? Tell me about this Sophie you wrote that you were engaged to. Oh, I'm not engaged anymore, Aunt Minnie. We had a fight the night of our graduation a dance. A fight? Yes, about a dress she was wearing, Aunt Minnie. It was kind of... Well, you see, there wasn't much to it. So I told her I didn't like it, and she said... She said what? She said I was a small-town hick. Oh. And a couple of other things. She sounds horrible. Oh, she is, not Aunt Minnie. She's wonderful. We've had some wonderful times together. Sir! Many loved that song, but she wanted to talk. We reminisced for nearly an hour when suddenly from the other room came the sound of an angry woman's voice. <laughs> What's that for Pete's sake? That is Shvarenka, Johnny. A customer of mine, a Russian dancer, and a... Oh, Shvarenka. That, oh, that, 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 Stephanie. She has called me names. That, 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 common, ordinary Hey, little... now, just a second. Oh, get out of my way. Madame Roberta, I have never insulted anyone. Oh, she lies. You handle this situation, Johnny. I'll take care of Stephanie. Oh, take your hands off me. Take them off. Oh. Oh. I do not notice what is holding me. <laughs> <laughs> what a arm. What a chest. Only America makes a chess like that. Hey, now, it's your turn to let go of me. <laughs> Why? You do not like Schwarenka? Sure, sure I like you, but... Uh... But you think Schwarenka might be hard to handle, eh? Well, uh... Well, could be, could be. <laughs> I'll be hard to handle... I promise you that. So when I race came, don't start to complain and leave me flat. I'll be hard to handle. How else can I be? I say with a shrug, eh, a fellow's a mug to fool with me. Be a lover who enthuses. Always mind your P's and Q's. Watch your step or you're up to get crowned. If you try to pull a fast one, our romance will be a pattern with you resting six feet underground. I'll be hard to handle, my bridges are burned. Be careful with me, cause I'm TNT where you're concerned. I'm going to kick and scream till you get rough. Then, when you shout enough, I'll be hard to handle where you're concerned. Oh, and now, my wonderful 
American kiss me. Hey, I am... Well, 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 I see you got Paris well in hand. And don't try to tell me this is your Aunt Minnie. Ah, I'm not an American. But where is your chest? <laughs> I slipped down on the back and came up under an assumed name. <laughs> Where's my chest? Well, Schwarenka, you've calmed down, I see. Oh, Madame Roberta, Schwarenka apologizes. Tomorrow I come back for another fit. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. <laughs> But remember, if you don't behave yourself, my nephew will be here to handle you. Ooh, how lovely. <laughs> Detestable woman. Imagine being married to her. I'd probably love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, Minnie, I want you to meet my friend Huck Haynes. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Haynes? I didn't see you when I came in. I know. I'm always the same color as the wallpaper. <laughs> I'm so glad that you boys have... have... And, Minnie, what's wrong? Oh, wait. It's nothing to worry about, dear. Just after... After 75 years, my heart gets a little tired once in a while. Well, maybe Huck and I'd better clear out and let you rest. Perhaps just for a little while, Johnny. Goodbye, Madam Alberta. Goodbye, Mr. Haynes. Goodbye, John, dear. Stephanie. Stephanie. Oh, yes, Madame Roberta. Uh, do you not think you had better rest now? In just a minute, Stephanie, dear. How did you like him? Oh, very, very much, madame. I'm glad. Now I think I will rest until my lawyer comes. It's very important that I see him, Stephanie. There's something I haven't done, and I... Oh, do not worry about a thing, madame. Please, just rest. Will you sing to me, Stephanie? Well, of course, if you want me to. Sing the song I love so much, Stephanie? Don't stop, Stephanie, please. Oh, now, who's that? Aunt Minnie. Oh, John, dear, come in. Stephanie's singing to me. But I... Uh... Oh, no, no, nothing is so important that it can't wait until Stephanie's finished, John. Go on, Stephanie, dear. You and I, throughout a summer day, have walked a sunlit way or stopped to play. And I have wandered hand in hand Throughout a happy land that we had planned I had hoped that our way might end Where the sky and the blue horizon blend Yet we've both walked
here, Stephanie. That's what I came in to tell her. And... Stephanie! That Minnie isn't asleep. She's... Turn with Roberta in just a moment. But first, here is a reminder. If you want a good picture of just how busy our country is, one of your best yardsticks is the number of freight cars loaded and moved each week. The Car Service Division of the Association of American Railroads keeps an accurate check on such figures. They report that during 10 weeks out of the past 11, an average of more than 900,000 cars have been loaded each week. That's nearly enough loaded cars each week to make three unbroken trains stretching all the way from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. This year, the average freight train has turned out more transportation service an hour than ever before. This was done first by hauling more tons in each train, and second by keeping the trains moving faster and more steadily. Another thing that helped to improve our railroad service has been the new freight cars, which the railroads are building and buying as fast as they can get them. And these new cars are but one item in the billion-dollar-a-year improvement program of the railroads. One detail in their determined drive to provide still better service for you. And now back to Roberta, starring Eddie Bracken, Jan Clayton, and your host, Gordon McRae. Aunt Minnie passed away before she could sign her will. And since I was certainly no dressmaker, Stephanie and I became Madame Roberta Incorporated. And after a couple of weeks, we gave our first fashion show. And Huck was more excited about it than I was. Brother, I never saw such a crowd. And all dames. All dames. <laughs> Is that bad? Who said it was bad? Oh, everything's ready, Johnny. Oh, the dresses look wonderful, Stephanie. All except... Uh, except what, Johnny? Well, I hate to ask you this, Stephanie, but... Would you mind not showing that chartreuse dress? Hey, you going crazy? That little number has everything. I mean, it has nothing. <laughs> I mean, it brings out the, uh, 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 well, I mean, in the, well, it, it works out the, uh, it, it has, uh, uh, wow. <laughs> well, just the same, I'd appreciate it, Stephanie, if you don't show that dress, it Reminds me of a dress, a girl I was... Well, a girl I knew wore at our graduation dance. I didn't like the dress then, and I still don't. Oh, well, then, of course, we won't show it, Johnny. Thanks. The fashion shows seemed to be a great success. They liked every gown we showed them. Afternoon dresses. Sportswear. Evening gowns. And then came our biggest events. Ladies and gentlemen, for our last number, Madame Roberta Incorporated is proud to present the bridal gown that was designed and will be modeled by my partner, Mademoiselle Stephanie. Well, in that wedding gown, Stephanie did something to me. I don't know what. And then just as I was about to speak to her, my girl, Sophie Teal, came up out of the audience and threw her arms around me. Johnny, darling, at last. I was in Deauville when I heard about the show, and I came right to Paris. Darling, you were such a success, and I've missed you so much. Oh, I'll, I'll see you later, Johnny. No, wait, Stephanie. I, I want you to meet... I'm Sophie Teal, Johnny's fiance. His fiance? Yes, we were keeping it a secret, but I think that's rather silly, don't you? Oh, yes. Yes, it's very silly. Now, Stephanie, wait a second. Oh, Johnny, hold me close, darling. There, how does it feel to hold me in your arms again? Feels wonderful, Sophie. <laughs> wonderful.
I saw Sophie every day after that, and she really was wonderful. We set the date of our wedding for November the 12th. I told Hook about it one afternoon in the shop. November 12th? For Pete's sake, Johnny, what'd you do, lose a bet? Oh, now lay off, Huck. Oh, oh Johnny, you, you haven't forgotten, have you? The annual Roberta party is tonight. The part? Oh, gosh, that's right. Stephanie, I'm awfully sorry, but I, I made a previous engagement. Yeah, previous, spelled S-O-P-H-I-E. Oh, now, Huck, I told you, lay off. You're the only guy I know who doesn't think I'm the luckiest man in the world. You want to bet? Stephanie, tell me frankly, wh what do you think of Sophie? Uh, frankly? Yeah, straight from the shoulder. Uh, well, Johnny, in my country, there's a proverb, all men should study carefully. A proverb? Yes, it's, uh, when your heart's on fire, smoke gets in your eyes. I don't get it. You wouldn't. You don't smoke. <laughs> they ask me how I knew my true love was true. Meaning, I suppose, that I don't know what I'm doing. You catch on pretty quick. No, Johnny. It just means that you must be sure. Terribly sure. I couldn't be more sure. But thanks for the advice. I'll see you around, huh? Oh, Johnny! Johnny! No, laughing friends did I. isn't over yet. I once a girl I was going around with gave me the air. Do you know what I did? No. What did you do, Mr. Haynes? Well, 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 well. If it isn't my old sorority sister, Sophie Teal. Well, what did you do, Mr. Haynes? No problem, honey. I just broke a neck. <laughs> very, very funny. Gosh, she got it. Stephanie, I need a new gown for tonight. I'm having dinner with Johnny, and I want to look particularly well. Why don't you just shine up your fangs and let it go at that? Oh, I am sorry, Miss Steele, but it is impossible to deliver a gown in no under six weeks. Well, what's wrong with that chartreuse dress the young woman is carrying? Oh, no. No, that would not do at all. I insist on trying it on. If you refuse, I shall have to speak to Johnny about it. Marie, uh, please show Miss Steele where she may try on the gown that you're carrying. 
Thank you, darling. I was beginning to think you didn't want me to have a gown for tonight. Sweet, isn't she? Oh, oh that's the dress that Johnny asked me not to exhibit at our show. He hated it. I cannot let her have oh, it. Oh, baby, look, she has to have it. And it's about time you stop singing those sad little songs. Insist on Soapy taking that dress, and the next time you see Johnny, be cool. Play hard to get. You've got to begin cooking on the front burner, Steph. Hmm. Maybe you're right, Huck. Strike a match. I start dinner now. I took Sophie to dinner that night to a small, out-of-the-way restaurant where I thought nobody could find us. As I helped her off with her cloak, I saw she was wearing the chartreuse dress I had asked Sophie not to show. Why, John, what's the matter? That dress. What's wrong with this dress? It suits me perfectly. Why, it's positively indecent. Oh, you're just as much of a small-town hick as you were back in college. Maybe you'd rather see it on Stephanie. Now, leave Stephanie out of this. Oh, so that's where the shoe pinches, is it, Mr. Johnny Kent? You know, you were right about that dress, Sophie. It's just your type. How dare you! I despise you, John Kent, and I'm through. Do you hear? I'm through. It's music to my ears. Goodbye. Would you like to have the cab fare back to America, Sophie? <laughs> and you too, Huck Haynes. You're both a pair of fatuous, nauseating, soporific bores. That's a lot of $2 words just to say nuts. <laughs> Huck, what are you doing here? Never mind, but it worked. Are you coming to the party at Madame Roberta's with me? Stephanie's waiting for you. Huck, you're not kidding, are you? Baby, I wasn't called on as Huckleberry Haynes for nothing. Let's go. <laughs> when Huck and I got there, Stephanie was singing. Huck, what do you think I should say to her? That song ought to give you a rough idea. When your heart's on fire, you must realize smoke gets in your eyes. So I chopped them and I gaily laughed to think they could doubt my love. Yet today, Oh, so you decided to honor us after all, Mr. Kent. Where is Miss Teal? Sophie? Well, she went home. Oh, I see. And uh, having nothing better to do, you came back here. Stephanie, dear, may I have the next dance with you? I'd love it, Ladislaw. Please, Stephanie, I've got to talk to you now. Uh, will you excuse me, Ladislaw? My business partner wishes to speak to me. Certainly, Stephanie. Well, John, what is it? Who is that Ladislaw? Are you in love with him? Ladis Love works here with us, and as for being in love with him, I consider that a very impertinent question, Mr. John Kent. Okay, baby. If that's the way you feel about it. That is the way I feel about it. All right. Then I guess this is where I came in. Oh, Johnny! Johnny, wait! I love you so. You don't think it matters, Stephanie. It's Johnny, he's gone. He'll never know. He's gone, Ladislaw. He will come back, Stephanie. Oh, no. no, he will not. I know he will not. I could tell by the look in his eyes.
mentioned earlier this evening that the railroads during 10 weeks out of the past 11 moved an average of more than 900,000 carloads of freight each week. This couldn't have been done without a lot of new freight cars. And the fact is that since the end of the war, the railroads have put in service more than 200,000 new freight cars. And they have put as many more in new car condition by a major program of repairs and rebuilding. Now, that's a lot of freight cars, but it isn't enough. So the railroads have ordered another 111,000 new freight cars, enough to keep the car builders busy for a full year to come. And before these are built, still others will be ordered. Altogether, these 300,000 new cars are costing the railroads more than $1,250,000,000. And that's just part of what the railroads are spending to provide better service for the business of the country and for you. When it comes to spending money, the railroads are in the same fix as the rest of us. What they can spend depends on what they make. And so railroad service of the future depends upon railroad revenues now. That's another reason why it means something to everybody, that railroads shall be financially able to keep on making the improvements necessary to meet the growing needs of this growing nation. The Railroad Hour show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Turn you to Roberta, starring Eddie Bracken, Jan Clayton, and your host, Gordon McRae. When I left the party at Madame Roberta's that night, I was burning. I told Huck I was going to see Schwarenka. And on the way over to the Cafe Russe, I, I kept wondering what Stephanie was doing. Oh, hey, I, Stephanie. Look, I've been looking all over for you. Oh, so I should cook, should I, Mr. Huggleberry Haynes? Well, look, now, just hold on to your hat for a second. Do not speak to me, but I will tell you right now. I am through with this cooking. Yeah, I think it's about time, Steph. Johnny's gone out to do a little cooking himself. And too many cooks spoil the cooks. Uh, or vice versa. Well, look, everybody in the family can't be a cook. He's gone out where? Well, he's gone over to the Cafe Roost to see Sharanka, honey. And, and uh, if you want a piece of advice, you better go over there, too. And, baby, you'd better go as a woman. When I got to the Cafe Roost, Sharanka seemed awfully glad to see me. But I wasn't in any mood to be friendly. I, I kept glaring into space until finally the waiter came up with our drinks and said, Your drinks, Monsieur Dame? To Schwarenka special. Ah, now you will smile, my handsome one. A toast to us. Sure, a toast to us. <laughs> what, what's in this thing? Vodka and gunpowder. <laughs> I drink it each morning instead of orange juice. Hey, Johnny. Oh, fine, fine. I can't leave you for five minutes without you running into a morass. A morass? Who is a morass? In fact, what is a morass? Call me later, honey. Look, Johnny... Now, beat it, Huck. Get lost. Yes, yes, yes. Go away, small one. What are you doing here anyway? I'm booing mentally. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Princess Helena Anastasia Luisa Alexandra Stefania Romanov. The princess? <laughs> Gosh, Huck, look, it's Stephanie. She's beautiful. And I've been such a sap. Well, you'll never make the headlines. You go and tell her you're a sap. Maybe she likes saps. Schwarenka feels a scream coming on. A big one. And now Schwarenka feels a hand across her mouth. A dirty one. <laughs> Stephanie. Stephanie. Good evening, John. Well, I don't blame you, Stephanie. I've been a fool, a chump. And now it's too late. Too late? I, I do not understand. 
too late to tell you that I love you. <laughs> but why, Johnny? Because you're a princess, because you... Because you love Ladislaw. Of course I love Ladislaw, Johnny. Why wouldn't I love him? He's my cousin. Your cousin? Then he... Oh, what's the difference? You're still a princess. So? Well, Stephanie, doesn't that mean that I can't... I mean, doesn't it mean that we can't? <laughs> Mimosium, Dora Goy. Okay, okay, rub it in. Who rubs it in? Well, then what did you say? I said, you can and we can. And, oh, please, hurry up and ask me, darling. Please, darling, before the smoke gets in your eyes. No, no laughing, laughing friends delight. Tears I, I cannot hide. Fresh, I'll understand. When our lovely flame dies. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. This is Gordon McRae giving a special vote of thanks to our two guest stars this evening, Hetty Bracken and Jan Clayton, Nana Bryant and Viola Vaughn and the other members of tonight's cast for their fine performances in our production of Roberta, which was adapted for radio by Ed Gardner and Don Ettlinger. Next week, our star-studded show chain will arrive on the same tracks at the same time. On board will be Margot, Leo Carrillo, Marion Hutton, and Sweeney and March. To join me in bringing you the famous Ziegfeld musical show, Rio Rita, with our chorus under the direction of Norman Luboff and the music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. All aboard! Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Remember, during the coming week, as always, the American Railroads will provide for you the dependable, low-cost transportation, which is so essential to the American way of living. presented by special arrangement with Tam's Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae appeared on this program by arrangement with Warner Brothers. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the Association of American Railroads.